All right, let's uh, find out what we're gonna do for part uh, C. I have a linear term at the top and I have a cubic term in the bottom. So here the story goes like this. I first of all I have to factor uh, I have to factor the polynomial, right? I have to factor the polynomial in the bottom. Um, um, well, it's already uh, a proper uh, integral to start with. So, uh, so my first task is to factor uh, the denominator, like in uh, uh, part two here. So, uh, but it's a cubic, so we don't have a nice formula to work with, and in fact, uh, it's hard uh, to to sort of like factor this out. Uh, but there's one thing that you can do, uh, which is sort of like a quick. Uh, um, Simplifying this, so I have um, x cubed plus x squared minus x minus one, okay? And I can pull out x squared here, and I still have minus x minus one, but I'm gonna pull out minus one for the last two terms, so that becomes x plus one. So this way I have uh, a common uh, factor, right? So why don't we factor uh, that out? So x plus 1, and I have x squared minus 1, okay? I can factor x squared minus 1 as x minus 1 times uh, x plus 1. That's the difference of the squares, right? From algebra, I can do that. And these are like factors, so why don't we combine? So this is sort of like an easy way uh, to... Uh, to factor the cubic in the bottom. This may this this technique may not work for different cubic uh, polynomials. For example, if I change the sign here to plus, uh, probably it's not going to work. Okay. So what I want to say here is that uh, generally when you see a cubic, uh, we first guess the root uh, by feeding in sample values for x. Okay. And once you know the once you know one of the factors, then you can do a long division. So I'm going to pretend like I did not use this technique even though I know how it works. Okay, I'm going to pretend now. And then I'm going to try to guess what the first uh, root could be. Okay, for uh, x cubed, for x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. I'm trying to sort of like find one root or one zero of this equation. That's going to tell me exactly what the one factor of this cubic will be. Okay, well, I'm going to try x equals 0, um, well, 0 cubed, 0 squared, minus 0, minus 1. That is not equal to 0, right? Because on the left, you're, you're still having a negative 1, so it's not equal to 0. Let's try x equals 1. We're just trying simple values, okay, like x equals 1, x equals negative 1, 2, negative 2, okay? For 1, so you have 1 cubed, 1, 1 squared is 1 minus 1 minus 1, there you go, I got 0. So what is the meaning of this? Well that means x minus 1, um, x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. So that's good because I can do long division here. Okay, I'm going to do a long division. Okay. to find the, the other quadratic part of the cubic, okay? All right, if, if you don't remember that, that should be like a good uh, run through for you in this example. So I need to have x squared here, so that this is x cubed minus x squared, so I'm gonna do subtraction here, okay? So this minus becomes plus, so two x squared minus x minus one, obviously x cubes are gone after, the, after you subtract them, okay? So they're gone. All right, so uh, continue. Well, I have two x here. I'm gonna continue with a different color for you to see. Two x squared minus two x. I'm gonna do subtraction again. Well, x squared, two x squared terms are canceled. Minus x minus minus two x, that's x. And I also have minus one over there, okay? All right, let's use a different color. I'm gonna use a one times x minus one. So I'm gonna put a plus one over there. So this is x minus one, subtraction, that takes you all the way to zero, okay? All the way to zero, okay? If you subtract, if you put the 
uh, let me just put the minus sign here so that we know that x minus 1 is subtracted from x minus 1. That takes you to 0. Okay. So uh, what happens is that the other factor that I'm uh, after okay, is what pops here. Okay. So in other words, so uh, x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to, I, I knew already one factor, x minus 1. And the other one is x squared plus 2x plus 1. The good news is that uh, this term is a quantity power of x plus 1. So this is in fact um, x minus 1, x plus 1 quantity squared. So this is uh, how I factored um, the cubic term here in two different ways. Okay, In two different ways. And, and I would totally recommend you to use this way because most of the time uh, reordering the terms, factoring out uh, may not work okay so once we have this uh, once we have these factors see like there's one factor uh, coming with uh, without power and the other one comes with a power so in one case m uh, m here is one for the other one m equals two i have two linear factors but one comes without power the other one comes with a power okay as you see so this is power one this is power one but this is already power 2. So I'm going to apply this strategy here. Uh, whenever I have a power, and I should keep all the powers up to that order. Okay. So for example, for that term coming with power 2, I'm going to have two fractions corresponding to that. Okay. So um, here we go. Um, but in fact, before I do that, why don't we have the partial fraction uh, uh, yeah, why don't we uh, why don't we go to like a newer slide so that we can work uh, through that? So three minus x, three minus x, x cubed plus x squared minus x minus one. So now I'm going to write down the fractions here. Okay. So uh, for x minus one, it's easy. I'm going to put uh, a one over x minus one. For the other uh, uh, factor here, I'm going to have two fractions corresponding to that. One is um, a2 over uh, x plus 1. The other one is a3 over x plus 1 squared. If you miss one of those, then probably you're going to have a wrong answer along the way. Okay. So uh, this could be like a little bit longer video. Okay, I'm going to have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply both top and the bottom by square of this. Uh, this is x minus 1, x plus 1, and then this one is going to be x minus 1. All right, so we have the common denominators. Here we go. I'm going to write only the tops, okay? 3 minus x equals a1 times x plus 1 squared a2 times x minus 1, x plus 1, and a3 times x minus 1. Okay. First sample point is going to be x equals 1. Second one is going to be x equals negative 1. I'm going to choose uh, another sample point at the end. Okay. So let's consider uh, these two cases first. Okay. x equals 1. Uh, left hand side is 2, right hand side is 2 squared 4a1, and the other terms are all gone. So a1 equals uh, 1 half. If x equals a negative 1, so the left hand side is 4, and the first two terms on the right hand side uh, are 0. Uh, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2, a3. So a3 turns out to be uh, negative 2. And for the last one, I'm going to just pick uh, zero to make my life easy, okay? So um, x equals uh, zero because there's no other factor over there that I can uh, make use of. So left-hand side is three, right-hand side is uh, a1, uh, negative a2, right, minus one times one, and then minus a3, okay? So 3 equals 1 half uh, plus 2 minus a3. Uh, out of this, I think a3 turns out to be 1 minus 1 half. That is negative uh, 1 half. 
All right, so I'm going to rewrite uh, a1 uh, expression like this whole uh, whole uh, uh, partial fraction again. Um, so um, I'm going to erase this, erase this, erase this. Okay, a1 is one half. A2 is negative two. A3 is negative one half. Okay, uh, and I don't need any of these. Okay, I don't need any of this. All right, everything is cleaned up. There we go. I'm going to integrate left hand side. So this is in fact what the question uh, was. There we go. And I'm going to have a u substitution uh, for each case. Okay. So uh, for this one, well, u equals x minus one is going to work. Okay. So du equals dx. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use a different letter. V equals x plus one. And in fact, for these two, v equals x plus one is going to work perfect for both. Okay, v equals x plus one, and dv equals dx. Okay, so let's rewrite everything. I'm going to factor out one half. I have du over u minus two dv over uh, minus two uh, dv over v, right? And uh, Minus one half dv over uh, let's see v squared. Okay. Now I can integrate everything in one shot. One half ln absolute value of u minus two ln absolute value of v. And this is something that we did earlier, so I'm going to rewrite this as v to the minus two dv and use uh, power rule for integration. Okay. So essentially, it's one half, one over v. Okay, so one over uh, x, one over v. Let me just write uh, explicitly what it is. Uh, one over v. Okay, v to the minus one divided by minus one. So there's another minus one here, and I use the reciprocal plus c. So in total, I have ln of u in absolute value minus two ln of x plus one plus one half, one over x plus one plus c. All right, all right. This was a pretty long uh, problem, uh, and 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 everything uh, is uh, depending on how you factor the cubic. How you factor this cubic? Uh, so if you can uh, manage uh, factoring cubic by using the long division, uh, that's perfect. All right. I think this is the end of the video, and and for the whole uh, question. So um, if you have any questions, uh, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please uh, send those to my way. Um, I'll see you in another video. Bye.